Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, I've been asked many, many times, do I like my fuel injection? Is EFI worth it? Well, obviously that's a very subjective topic. So we're gonna cover it in this video in basically four groups. Installation, tuning, performance, and cost. So stay tuned. When it comes to installation, there is no question a carburetor is a much more simple process. You can effectively take it out of the box, throw it on the engine, and it will fire up and be ready for a drive. Especially since most of these old muscle cars came factory with a carburetor, it is often a pretty direct swap. Fuel injection, on the other hand, is much more involved, and it is important to do the installation as good as you can to avoid problems down the road. This means good electrical connections that aren't exposed to the elements, good grounds, proper gauge wiring, leak-free fuel lines, etc, etc, etc. The TBI systems like the Fitech or Holly Sniper are about as straightforward as you can get with the built-in ECU and fuel regulator. A lot of other systems have a standalone ECU and fuel regulator that you will need to mount separately. Now while some systems offer a fuel command center which runs off your mechanical fuel pump, those are not ideal setups and it is recommended to upgrade the entire fuel system with an intake fuel pump, which often requires running new fuel lines and an EFI suitable gas tank. Then there is the added complexity if you want your EFI to control your timing. Carburetors are very simple devices and for the most part will take as much fuel as the engine needs. As the engine sucks air through the Venturis, it pulls fuel through the jets, if the engine is lean, you install larger jets. If it is rich, you install smaller jets. Very simple. In the case of carbs like this Holly 4 barrel, to access the jets, you first need to remove the float bowls. The front jets are your primaries, and the rear jets are your secondaries. If you have an AFB carburetor, then you'll also have metering rods. All of this just dials in your air-fuel ratios. There's also the squirter, the accelerator pump cam, and in some cases the vacuum secondary springs, all of these are just some of the tuning features to get your engine running correctly over a wide variety of driving conditions. Any adjustments will require you to physically change a part and then see if it makes a difference. To change the jets, it will even require you to drain the fuel out of the bowls, which can be a little messy and a little smelly. Tuning your EFI can fall into a basic category and an advanced category. Now for the most part, you do not require a laptop to start advanced tuning. Basic tuning is very, very easy. To change your target AFRs, you simply go on your handheld, make the changes as you want, and let the computer figure it out. Same with setting your idle RPM or even the timing curve if you are set up for timing control. No longer do you have to get dirty under the hood or carry extra parts to change the tune-up. It can all be done from inside the car. Furthermore, fuel injection runs off an O2 sensor, and as far as I know, all the popular kits have the ability to monitor and data log what is going on with your engine, which is tremendously valuable. With data logs, you can monitor your RPMs, throttle position, fuel, spark, and much, much more, all which can help you dial in your tune for better performance. If you're running a carburetor, you would at least need to install a wideband O2 sensor or hook up to a dyno to get accurate data. Now even though these EFI systems are self-learning, there is only so much you can figure out and adjust from the base tune. If your base tune is way off from what the engine likes, it isn't going to run all that great. And this brings us to the more advanced tuning category. Playing with the VE tables and timing curves, adjusting the fuel enrichments for different loads and how quickly you come on and off the throttle, fine tuning all these features can really transform how your vehicle performs. But the truth is, this is no different than dialing in a carburetor or distributor, and whether you have a carb or EFI, there are people out there that can tune an engine razor sharp. Now I believe there are a few myths surrounding fuel injection. One, EFI makes more power, especially more torque. Two, EFI gets better fuel economy. And three, EFI has better throttle response. Now there are some truths to this, but the expectation is people buy an EFI kit, they throw it on the engine, expect all three of those to happen right away, and that's rarely the case. Now if the tune on your carburetor is way off, then yeah, you could see a significant improvement with the fuel injection. But if your carburetor is dialed in, then the EFI could feel quite lazy. 
Now, assuming you have the correct carb or throttle body on your engine, then for the most part, it's going to come down to the tune. But for now, let's address each myth individually. All things being equal, the power between a carburetor and a fuel injection system are going to be pretty close. I do think it can be easier with EFI to get more power across the entire power band, whether it is 2000 RPM or 7000 RPM, you can get the computer very close on your AFR targets for maximum power. This might be especially noticeable when compared to a big old honk and holly dominator that might make killer power at wide open throttle, but can be difficult to tune at part throttle or low RPMs. I have had my car on the chassis dyno with a Holly 750 CFM 3310 carburetor, and then again with the Fitech EFI. With the EFI, I made 11 more rear wheel horsepower and 13 foot pounds of torque, and some other variables may be involved, but my best dyno numbers and drag strip mile per hour have come with the EFI. Does EFI give you better fuel economy? Not necessarily, but it can, and I would say it's easier to do with EFI. When I had the carburetor, I would usually average 10 to 11 miles per gallon on a tank of gas with a best of 11.82. When I first put in the EFI, I would often average well under 10 miles per gallon, though I was dealing with some issues with the system. However, prior to putting in the 6B transmission, my best tank average was only 11.45, so my fuel economy got worse with fuel injection. With all due respect. What the f Since then, I went to timing control, got my tune a lot better, and with the 6-speed and steeper 391 gears, I can average over 14 miles per gallon if I want to. Now, if I really wanted to, I could lean out the fuel even more, crank another couple degrees of timing while cruising, and probably get even better fuel economy. And I can do this all from the handheld in about a minute, and this is why I would say it's likely easier to get better fuel economy with EFI. With the right tune-up, EFI can definitely be more efficient. Does EFI have better throttle response? Well, in my experience, the answer was absolutely not. At least not in the beginning. A lot of people with the Phytech experienced the same issue as I did, where it would kind of stumble and bog and then go lean and go too rich. And I've made a few videos on how to tune that out, so be sure to check that out. I also experienced some stumbles and delays with the Holly Terminator EFI system in a different car. A lot of this, if not all of it, can be tuned out to perform just as good or better than a carburetor but don't expect the EFI to just figure itself out and be better right away. Though once you get the tune-up right, the drivability can be exceptional. The last thing I'll mention under performance is the EFI has a huge advantage for cold starts. With the carburetor, I used to have to pump the gas like seven times just for the engine to fire, and then I would have to hold the throttle until the engine got to about 120 degrees until it would idle on its own. With the fuel injection, I just turn the key, let the fuel pump prime, fire it up, and I'm ready to go for a drive. It's great! The last thing I want to talk about is cost. If you go to Summit Racing, Amazon, or Jags, you can generally pick up a new square bore carburetor for four or five hundred dollars for a mild version, or nine hundred to eleven hundred dollars for the fancier Holly XPs. Of course, if you want to tune it, you need to spend some money on jets and whatnot. If your fuel pump is sufficient, your expenses are pretty much complete. A fuel injection system is a little bit misleading. You can find the cheaper Phytech and Holly Sniper systems ranging from about $860 to $1,700, but there is a lot of hidden expenses that come with that, most of which come from upgrading your fuel system. You're looking at $550 to $750 for an EFI fuel tank and fuel pump, a couple hundred dollars for fuel lines and fittings, 
You may have to spend a couple hundred dollars on a fuel pressure regulator. Because it's electrical, you may need to upgrade your charging system. So maybe $200 on a new alternator and wires and relays. If you want timing control, you may need a new distributor, which means about 400 bucks. You may need to spend $60 to $100 on a throttle cable bracket. If your air cleaner base doesn't fit, you may need to buy a different one. So now your $860 to $1,700 system is easily double that, and that is still on the low end of the budget spectrum. You can get into the multi-port fuel injections that can quickly see $4,000, $6,000, $8,000, depending how crazy you want to go. So which one is better? Let's do a quick recap. For installation, I think it's quite clear to see that carburetors are much easier to install. It's not to say that fuel injection is difficult, it's just more involved. Ease of tuning goes to EFI because it all can be done from a handheld or laptop, which is cleaner and quicker. Also, the self-learning feature means you don't have to tune for different weather conditions or altitudes. Tuning features again goes to EFI as the computer gives so many more options in an all-in-one system. However, some of these features can be for the more advanced user. And of course, having built-in data logging is a huge advantage. For power, I would say this is a draw. You will hear just as many cases for carbs making more power as you will with EFI. Drivability goes to EFI. You can tune the system to work extremely well over a much bigger operating window than a carburetor. There is a reason why all manufacturers went to fuel injection. Fuel economy? While it's not simply a case of throwing on an EFI system and gain 10% better fuel mileage, EFI can definitely be made to run more efficiently than a carburetor, thus netting better fuel economy. Cost? When it comes to old muscle cars, an EFI conversion is almost always going to cost more than a carburetor upgrade, and the cost difference can be quite significant. So was EFI worth it to me? Yes, absolutely, without question. In fact, I don't think I would ever go with a carburetor again unless I had to, and I love carburetors. They perform great, they're a great value. I just like all the extra features that comes with fuel injection. Honestly, I would go with a much more advanced fuel injection if it was in the budget. And clearly, I am, have no problem uh, trying to learn tuning or learning the advanced features. And I think that's what scares a lot of people away from EFI. There's still a lot of folks out there that are afraid of electronics and technology. And they get in this mindset that they believe they'll never figure it out. And I don't think that's quite realistic, at least for the most part. The truth is, it is a big investment, and it is a bit of a learning curve, so do your research, talk to people, find out if EFI is right for you. Now if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. There's a couple of links in the description if you'd like to support the channel. Don't forget to subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.